Chapter 6 Good Results A considerable portion of the happenings of life comes to us without any direct choosing on our part, and such happenings are generally regarded as having no relation to our will or character, but as appearing fortuitously, as occurring without a cause. Thus one is spoken of as being lucky, and another unlucky, the inference being that each has received something which he never earned, never caused. Deeper thought and a clearer insight into life convinces us, however, that nothing appears without a cause, that cause and effect are always related in perfect adjustment and harmony. That being so, every happening directly affecting us is intimately related to our own will and character, is indeed an effect justly related to a cause having its seat in our consciousness. In a word, involuntary happenings of life are the results of our own thoughts and deeds. This, I admit, is not apparent on the surface, but what fundamental law, even in the physical universe, is so apparent? If thought, investigation, and experiment are necessary to the discovery of the principles which relate one material atom to another, even so are they imperative to the perception and understanding of the mode of action which relate one mental condition to another. And such modes, such laws, are known by the right-doer, by him who has acquired an understanding mind by the practice of true actions. We reap as we sow. Those things which come to us, though not by our own choosing, are by our own causing, the drunkard did not choose the delirium tremens or insanity which overtook him, but he caused it by his own deeds. In this case the law is plain to all minds, but where it is not so plain, it is none the less true. Within ourselves is the deep-seated cause of all our sufferings, the spring of all our joys. Alter the inner world of thoughts, and the other world of events will cease to bring you sorrow, make the heart pure, and to you all things will be pure, all occurrences happy and in true order. Within yourselves deliverance must be sought, each man his prison makes, each hath such lordship as the loftiest ones. Nay, for with powers above, around below, as with all flesh and whatsoever lives, act maketh joy or woe. Our life is good or bad, enslaved or free, according to its causation in our thoughts for out of these thoughts spring all our deeds and from these deeds come equitable results we cannot seize good results violently like a thief and claim and enjoy them but we can bring them to pass by setting in motion the cause within ourselves men strive for money sigh for happiness and would gladly possess wisdom yet fail to secure these things, while they see others to whom these blessings appear to come unbidden. The reason is that they have generated causes which prevent the fulfillment of their wishes and efforts. Each life is a perfectly woven network of causes and effects, of efforts, or lack of efforts, and results, and good results can only be reached by initiating good efforts, good causes. The doer of true actions who pursues sound methods, grounded on right principles, will not need to strive and struggle for good results. They will be there as the effects of his righteous rule of life. He will reap the fruit of his own actions, and the reaping will be in gladness and peace. This truth of sowing and reaping in the moral sphere is a simple one, yet men are slow to understand and accept it. We have been told by a wise one, that the children of darkness are wiser in their day than the children of light. And who would expect, in the material world, to reap and eat where he had not sown and planted? Or who would expect to reap wheat in the field where he had sown tares, and would fall to weeping and complaining if he did not? Yet this is just what men do in the spiritual field of mind and deed. They do evil and expect to get from it good, and when the bitter harvesting comes in all its ripened fullness, they fall into despair and bemoan the hardness and injustice of their lot, usually attributing it to the evil deeds of others, refusing even to admit the possibility of its cause being hidden in themselves, 
in their own thoughts and deeds the children of light those who are searching for the fundamental principles of right living with a view to making themselves into wise and happy beings must train themselves to observe this law of cause and effect in thought word and deed as implicitly and obediently as the gardener obeys the law of sowing and reaping he does not even question the law he recognizes and obeys it when the wisdom which he instinctively practices in his garden is practiced by men in the garden of their minds when the law of the sowing of deeds is so fully recognized that it can no longer be doubted or questioned then it will be just as faithfully followed by the sowing of those actions which will bring about a reaping of happiness and well-being for all as the children of matter obey the laws of matter so let the children of spirit obey the laws of spirit for the law of matter and the law of spirit are one but they are two aspects of one thing the outworking of one principle in opposite directions if we observe right principles or causes wrong effects cannot possibly accrue if we pursue sound methods no shoddy thread can find its way into our web of life no rotten brick enter into the building of our character to render it insecure and if we do true actions what but good results can come to pass for to say that good causes can produce bad effects is to say that nettles can be reaped from a sowing of corn he who orders his life along the moral lines thus briefly enunciated will attain to such a state of insight and equilibrium as to render him permanently happy and perennially glad all his efforts will be seasonally planted all the issues of his life will be good and though he may not become a millionaire as indeed he will have no desire to become such he will acquire the gift of peace and true success will wait upon him as its commanding master end of chapter six recording by andrea fiore